Today we're going to be working on the Vishram and I need to do some maintenance in the front end of the bike so I got a new tire and the front tire that I have is pretty worn out and this is a Shinko tire that I bought online it's a 110 80 for the Vistrom and surprisingly this tire was about fifty dollars and I heard that it wears out like in around 10,000 miles so it's not a very good long-lasting tire but I'm still kind of pleased with it that you can get such cheap tires for the Vistrom this is a Trail Master E705 tire we're going to be installing this also you can watch one of my previous videos where I showed you how to install these uh, fork seals on the bike these are different fork seals than I installed the uh, last fork seals are in that I installed were all ball seals and my right fork is starting to leak and the oil has already gotten to the brakes so the brakes have almost zero stopping power and it's getting kind of dangerous so I'm going to be installing these fork seals and I am not installing the washers and stuff like that because the washers I put on it's only been like 15,000 miles since I installed it but one of the things that I did last time was install fork seals on the Vistrom 650 and this is why I think it's very important to learn how to do your own maintenance and half the time I'm just learning how to do stuff I've done it before but oftentimes I find myself struggling all the time but I'm going to show you how to install fork seals in this video and if you took it to a shop it would cost you over like $300 to fix fork seals it's, it's kind of expensive because it's very labor intensive when you first start riding you spend so much money on in bike shops so I recommend everybody to start learning how to do your own maintenance and that's the reason I'm putting together these videos even though I'm not a great mechanic and you'll see me making a lot of mistakes and stuff like that um, I tend to do all the maintenance on my bikes myself and I think the reason I picked the V-Strom 650 is that it's a very maintenance free bike it doesn't require a lot of work especially with the dark side tire I barely have to change it but I do have to put this tire and then I'm going to put this and I'm going to show you how to do it let's start the tire still has some thread but it's not good enough and my reasoning for changing the tire now is that I'm going to have to remove the wheel anyway so I might as well change the the fork seals and the tire at the same time but what happened is that the oil leaked down the fork got into the brake pads and made the braking extremely dangerous so right now this thing breaks kind of like a ninja 250 and the front brakes on the Vishram are actually very good but if I'm going to do some riding in the summer I want to make sure that this is well sorted out the last fork seal video that I did I didn't have the center stand and now I do working with a center stand is just so much easier but you're still going to need something to put underneath and lift up the front wheel front here One of the things I recommend you guys do is use latex gloves. It makes working on cars and bikes so much easier. First, you have to remove this bolt. This is a pinch bolt that holds the axle. Suzuki tends to do this quite often. You know, make sure you hold on to the bolts. Oftentimes, when I do this, I tend to misplace bolts, so put them in a safe place. I'm also going to remove the brake caliper right now. Sometimes it could get, it could be very stiff. This one's a little bit tougher because the, um, the cable is on here. But I should be able to get on here. You're going to have to remove that up. anyway. Anyway, so let's remove the bolts. And here's the two bolts. Put them where they come out. I usually put them like in the side of the bike that I removed it from. So the caliper is just hanging on here. We are going to tie this up somewhere here. You also don't want the brake pad to hang because it could damage the, the hoses that come with the uh, fluid. And I, I have a lot of brake pad. I'm actually surprised that it's uh, pretty good. And I'm just going to kind of tie it to my handlebar here. 
Let's remove the brake caliper bolts. Brakes are still decent. And I'm just gonna clip it onto here. And now it's kind of like out of the way. Point, you're gonna use one of these hex um, uh, keys and it's a 12 millimeter and it goes in here. You might need a breaker, something to give you a little bit of leverage and hold on to the bike and push it down. Ooh, man, that is tight on there. And once you hear that sound, that means that it broke. <clears throat> and I mean breaking in a good way. And now you can remove the axle. There's some threads here. Suzuki tends to do this quite often. What you do is try to get this as far out as you What I do is like I start pulling a little bit on this axle and you hear the, the wheel coming out. If you're by yourself, you can push up like this and hopefully the uh, axle will come out just like that. So here's your axle. Put it aside, make sure you don't lose that. Let's remove the speedo right here. There's this cable, and then there's another one here. What I like to do is put it aside and just put it right back on here. This way, I never know, I never lose the location. Let's remove. This plate came out, and I think that's from inside the, the fender. So I'm gonna just put it right here. Make sure you don't lose that. At one point I did lose these bolts, but this holds it fairly well. And I'm just gonna pull the hugger. The key to get it out is to push in in the middle and just kind of twist it as you're pulling it out. So now you have the forks exposed and you can just slide them out. I'm going to slide out just the right one. So underneath the fork brace here, there's two pinch bolts and I've already removed one. You don't have to remove them completely because we just want to pull out the fork. So what I'm going to do is just loosen this one there you go you can see it 10 millimeter get it in there and now it should be a little bit looser and now i'm going to uh, just loosen up the top bolt so let's put the 10 millimeter here and you see that the fork just slid down let's see if we can just get it all out look at that perfect i didn't have to raise it up anymore and this is one of the reasons I really like having a center stand on a bike. This makes it just so much easier. So what we're going to be doing now is removing this fork seal and checking the oil on it. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 6 millimeter hex wrench into here. And, and I'm just going to loosen it up. We start coming out. The oil is fairly new, but since we're changing the fork seal on this right hand one, we're going to be doing this. So we're going to remove this top cap. There's a spring in here, so what I do is I can put my hand like this and push it down a bit. And there it goes. The top cap. You also have this spacer, then you have a washer, then you have your spring. And here's the spring. We're just gonna put it in this oil drain pan. So we have to pull up this dust seal here, and I don't wanna damage it. Just do it a little bit at a time and pull up this seal. 
And there goes the seal. So there is a clip here. And if you use a little screwdriver, you're going to pull up this metal clip. This holds the the fork seal so it doesn't pop out. And it should be fairly easy to to remove. And there we go. That's the clip that holds it in. You should be able to just do this and it'll come out. There's the fork seal and the rest of the parts. This right here is the fork seal. I'm not even going to be bothering with any of this. Normally if you do your fork seals for a long time you probably should replace these um, these washers but these are fairly new so I'm not going to replace those. I'm just going to replace this. This fork seal looks fairly good so I'm surprised that it failed. What we're going to do is just going to get the other fork seal and just put it in there. It shouldn't be too too complicated. What I have here is the new kit from Boss Bearing. The last one I used was all balls and that one right seal broke so I'm going to try a different brand and I'm only going to replace one of them. So this kit already looks pretty good. It comes in this. It's a little bit different than... Oh I see. So it comes the fork seals are in one package and the dust seals are in another. So what I have here is the dust cap and it looks pretty good. It's the uh, same size as for the V-Strom. They're all almost universal. And then you have your dust cap or uh, your dust seal or your seal. So one thing to note is that there's a top part to the seal and a bottom part. The one with the the wire or the spring is on the top and the bottom one is this and we're just going to replace the seal and the uh, the dust seal so this is the old fork seal right here and the dust seal when I'm looking at it it looks actually in pretty good shape I don't know why it started to leak I'm actually going to hold on to it and I'm going to look at it just a little bit closer. So here is the pipe and remember I didn't even remove the washers and stuff because they're in good shape. I did clean this pipe quite a bit and now what I'm going to do is put the fork seal in there and hopefully it'll be a very easy slide in. Look at that. Perfect. And that's it. Guys here is the lower half of the fork and inside is this. So this bolt, you have to face it down like that. It'll just kind of drop into place. One thing I like to do is make sure that everything is nice and clean. But if you guys remember, this fork seal started leaking pretty fast and it was kind of a, a bummer because I don't particularly like doing this stuff. I prefer it to be right. What we have here is the bottom part and the top part and it goes like this. Also, as dirty as it seems, I just have oil all over it and the oil is fairly clean. I'm going to wipe it all out. But what you need is the top part, hold it like this, and you can fit it just like that. And then you have this with the washer. You can drop it in here. And it should come out at the very bottom of this, like that and just slide it in there. This goes like this. Kind of give it a little bit of a tap. Now it's in here. And then you slide it like this. And now all you really need to do is take your bolt with a six millimeter and just thread it. And hopefully it's going to hold. The next part is driving the seal onto the fork.
So the, um, the seal is in and how I drove it in is just basically a PVC pipe like this that I cut in half and then use the C-clamp. Normally it helps to have a, a pipe that was a, a little bit smaller so I can drive it in without having to do any of these cuts. And you have to push it in at the same time. So it can't be like one side and then the other side so it goes in cockeyed. For the fork seals not to separate, you're gonna to have to remove, or you're going to have to install this clip. Make sure that it's nice and clean, slide it in. And then you just have to, if you just do on one side like this, and you get it in, you could just push it down carefully, but to not screw the, and it's already in some grease. I'm just gonna put like a little bit of, make sure that you clean your forks really well. You don't wanna have any things contaminating it. And here is our new dust cap. All you have to do is put it through the top. All right guys, I have my fork oil here. I'm using just Maxima oils, fork oil. I got a 15 weight. And that's pretty much all you need for one fork. Uh, I think this is probably enough for two. I'm not quite sure. So what you need to do is measure from the top of the fork all the way down. So I got my fork oil and now we need to make sure that we measure the oil in the right proportions for each fork. I'm sure for each bike is different. For the DL650 it's 150 millimeters from the top or 5.9 inches. I've installed everything in the bottom half. I tightened the bolt at the bottom, make sure everything is nice and tight. And I put the dust seal. So the way we're gonna measure this is you're gonna put the, the top fork all the way down. You have to make sure you remove all the things inside. And I have them all here to the side. And you have a nice measure tape. What I'm going to be using for my measure are these shish kebab sticks or whatever. You can use anything. You can even use like a zip tie that's straight. And you're gonna measure 150 millimeters or 5.9 inches. And I'm going to mark it down here. And six inches right about here. And I'm gonna make a mark here So that's going to be my correct measurement. So what you do is you start filling it with oil and then you put it inside up to that mark and when it hits the very bottom, that's when you know that the correct amount of oil is going to be in the fork. It's kind of a prehistoric way of measuring. I, I don't understand why they can't make better fork tubes that have a better system. But this is what conventional forks are. So basically, I am going to be filling the fork oil all the way to here. And I'm just using 15 weight oil by Maxima. This was uh, $10, I believe, $9. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start pouring it in inside the fork. So I poured it in. I'm just going to do this a little bit, slowly. I'm going to start sticking it in, like that. Hasn't touched it yet. That's a good thing about that system. You can look from the top and see if it's touching just a little bit more we're almost at the top or at the position we want and I'm just keeping my eye out on the oil and then when it touches and I'm keeping it like my eye on the mark here and in the oil and that's it 
that's perfect. So now I have my correct oil level on my fork. All we have to really do now is install the the springs. I believe with different springs you would have different oil levels, but I'm not quite sure. So that's that. And now let's lift up the fork and drop in your washer. Make sure that it falls in there and it's in there. And then you put this in here like that. And now you have the cap. This part is a little bit difficult to do without a helping hand. There we go. And now just take one of these wrenches. I'm sure there's much better ways to do these things, but this is how I'm used to and how I've done it. And voila, your fork seal is in there. For about $20, you can fix your own fork seals as opposed to taking it to a shop and having it done for $300, $400, $600. It's a very simple process and I can see why people wouldn't want to do this, but it's fairly easy. It's a little time consuming, especially if you don't have the right tools on hand. That's what a lot of people struggle with, is having the right tools. But the tools are very simple. As you could see that, uh, you know, you can make something like this to, to basically just drive the fork seal in and that's it doesn't get much simpler than that. So now that you have your fork seal in there, and since I'm only going to be changing one, but the same process applies for the other one. It's the same thing. I'm just going to slide the fork back up there. So I'm going to slide my fork up. And this bolt here will tighten up the fork and that way you can tighten the the rest but so I'm looking at the other one and then I just have to tighten it a little for now and that looks to be at the right position so I'm going to tighten it a little bit more you don't have to go crazy yet with the tightening it's a little difficult to see here but you do have two bolts at this triple tree that's this bar right here if you follow it that's how you remove the fork and let me see if I can right here this being to the side it actually rotates so just make sure that you tighten these pretty well you don't want it to fall while you're riding and this is just a 10 millimeter. It helps to have a very, very small wrench like this to kind of get in here. Otherwise, you're going to have to remove the plastic, but you don't really need to. By using a very small wrench and a 10 millimeter, you can bolt the top and the two middle bolts, and that's pretty much all you need. Now we're gonna start putting the fender and then the wheel. There we go. Okay. Bolts to put it in here. And it seems to be fine. It's just a washer. That's the good thing about this tool. You can I'm going to take this tool. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to make sure that this is fairly tight. I don't want it to be too tight. But I want to make sure that it doesn't come loose while riding. This is pretty much how you can change some fork seals on your bike. And you don't have to take it to a shop. You can do it yourself. It's a very simple process. It just takes some time, but you can do it on a weekend. Try to pick like during the winter to do this if you can, because it's not worth paying $600 for a shop to do your fork seals. Every bike is very similar and very easy to do. 
At first, when I did it, I thought, man, that's very complicated, and I would rather have a shop do it. Because um, they kind of put the fear in you, this, you know, like, oh, it's you're going to crash. But in reality, it's a very simple process. If you just can keep track of how you remove things. Well, guys, that's how you do the fork seals on a V-Strom. I recommend everybody to start doing your own maintenance and don't spend too much money on shops. Their work is usually not as good as yours. Uh, it's very simple to do. The, park, the part for the fork seal was about $40, uh, probably less than $40, and you can get them even cheaper. And it's going to last you a while. You know, sometimes uh, riding off-road, you do bust the fork seal, and that's kind of like what I did on this thing. But very easy to do. And if you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.